Hey guys, welcome to episode two of the history of computers. Today's episode, we'll be discussing the history of the mouse. We're gonna start from the very first mouse. Not that mouse. No, now you've gone too far. Come back a little bit. What the? What is that? Imagine trying to use this. <laughs> Imagine trying to use this as a mouse and get bitten and forget Spider-Man. You become Mouse Man. <laughs> There it is. So we're going to be discussing from the very first mouse going through through the mouses of today. Mice of today. So let's get started on our journey. So who else remembers playing games before the mouse was a commonplace? Now, does anybody remember playing this game right here? Quick spoiler alert, that key that you need to get inside the house is inside the pumpkin. Now. Back then, you had to type what you wanted them to do and use the arrow keys on the keyboard. Now, games today, you can use the mouse. But in the before time, before there was a mouse, Douglas Engelbart was doing research and all there was to use was a trackball, which was invented in 1952, and a light pen that was invented in 1959. Now, both of these were uncomfortable to use and Douglas Engelbart wanted something better, being unsatisfied with the options available to him. It wasn't until eight years later that Douglas's partner, Bill English, developed the ball mouse that we all know today. Now this ball mouse can move in any direction and it worked by a ball interacting with two rollers. Now the speed and the direction of the mouse would be determined by the rotation of the ball itself. Now the problem with this mouse, who all remembers back in the day getting the little Q-tips, a little bit of alcohol? Not that kind of alcohol. There we go. Getting a little bit of alcohol and cleaning those rollers off. <laughs> Good old days, right? So there are a lot of misconceptions about Steve Jobs and the mouse. Now, a lot of people out there for some reason believe that Steve Jobs invented the mouse. This is absolutely incorrect. What Steve Jobs should get credit for though is making the mouse more mainstream. So Steve Jobs got the uh, inspiration for making the mouse from a visit to a Xerox facility in 19, 1979 where he went on a tour of the facility and saw what they were doing with the mouse. Now he thought to himself, they aren't doing enough. Why aren't they putting more research and development into the mouse? So when he got back to Apple, what he did was he went to his engineers and said, Xerox made this $400 mouse. It cost them $400 to manufacture. What I want you to do is make this it cost only $25 to make. And Xerox, his mouse breaks down in about two weeks. I want this one to last at least two years before it breaks. So by Apple making the price of production of the mouse cheaper and making changes to the GUI, such as dragging a window from one side of the screen to the other, or clicking the corner and changing the size of a window, were changes that made the mouse more user friendly and he was able to make it more commercialized. So Apple commercialized the mouse, but they did not invent the mouse. Now who remembers playing this game back in school when you're supposed to be paying attention in class? Sorry, Miss Santiago. When I was supposed to be paying attention to your language arts class, I was actually playing super number munchers. That's why I'm good at math today, but bad at spelling. <laughs> And yes, for those wondering, I am using my 2080 Ti to play 30 year old games. What? Come at me, bro. Now, the first optical mouse was actually developed back in 1980. Even though these mice were invented a long time ago, it didn't become consumer mouse until 1999 when Microsoft released the IntelliMouse. Now, nowadays, consumers have the options of getting an optical mouse or a laser mouse. Plus there's also, you can choose between wireless and wired. Now all of these have their pros and cons, but what about the future? What does that hold for GUI interactions? Now, one of the more recent failures for interacting with the GUI was, if anybody's ever heard of it, the Connect. Now this is you interact with gestures. This didn't work out too well. One of the failures of this is nobody wants to look like they're playing patty cake with an imaginary friend. But hey, one of the benefits of this connect and gesture pointing does give you a nice body. Check out, my, check out those biceps of mine. 
Now another option for a tracking device of the future could be maybe eye tracking, where you look at something and then maybe wink to select it. But this could come with its own share of problems. Let's say, let's say for example, your mom barges in on you and she'll be like, oh my God, what are you looking at? And then you'll be like, I don't know, I was looking up anime and then a bug flew in my eye and I accidentally winked and clicked on it. You know, who knows, that could happen. But what I'd say, don't mess with perfection. What we have right now works perfectly. I'm sure in the future there's going to be some innovations that might come out with something better. But hey, well, thank you for joining me. This has been my little short history of the mouse. Please subscribe, and I'll be releasing videos every Wednesday at 1.45. So please watch them and subscribe and like. You guys have a great day. Thank you.